Hello and welcome to Infinity. It's sometimes useful to do a macro when you've got multiple steps because you can just run them off without having to figure out what they are every time. And I haven't done a macro based video for quite some time so I thought we'll do one up on the frequency separation stacking. So let's start off. You need the macro tab up and you go to view studio and macro to get that up. I set it to shift M, it's not normally there, I said it set that through the preferences, but there we go. And then we just click on start recording and keep an eye on what's appearing here. So the first thing that I do is I go to select and deselect layers. And what that does, it takes the selection off here, which means it's going to force everything else to start appearing on the very top of the stack. What I may also do is select and deselect, which means, because if you've got a selection up, it can cause a bit of a confusion. So I, I might do that. And then I'll do layer, often merge visible, which puts a copy up here of the image on which to base your frequency separation. Um, you could rename at this point, but there's no point because when I do filters, frequency separation, it's going to rename this into two parts. So the first one I'm going to do is bilateral, and that's to work on the noise. And for that, put that down to one pixel. You can do it on two, but that's okay. So I'll then apply that. On this, it looks like this cogwheel means you can be able to change things later, but if you click on that, it can only change the radius on that. But it does mean you can go come back to this, which can be useful to set later. I'll talk about that in a bit. So now then what I've done here, of course, say call that bilateral to remind me of that and noise, because this is about noise. And then I'm going to put a noise reduction on here as well. And for this we need to make sure up here that I've got add adjustment as child. So I'm going to change that there uh, to child and add the filter there and change that to child and say close that there. Notice that doesn't appear up here as a macro step. So you can do that in the middle if you've forgotten it. So now what I'm going to do is go to live filters there and put in the denoise and that comes up here and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move this a little bit and notice when I moved it the noise reduction came up and that means I can change the values in here in other words set them working with the macro when it's run but I'll put it back to zero for now because I'm not going to change it now because that's going to vary. So then I'm going to go to the next one, uh, which is I want to get down to this layer selected here. Now this is a bit of a trick with macros. So I've got to go up to this one here and say select parent. And then this to one down here and say, because I don't want, don't want to say select na layer named low frequency because there might be another one with that name. So I always say select the one below the current. So that one goes to this one. So now I can do the next frequency separation. So filters, frequency separation here. Here, I'm going to do, because I'm going to work, put the sharpening in here, the thing that makes sharpening is to push over here the edges, which means this side is going to end up blurred because it's lost the edges. So I'm going to use Gaussian. And for that, I'm going to use a radius of one pixel. And I often do this with 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 this but we can come back to it later and then I'm going to apply that and it's set up there then the frequency separation and because this is sharpening I can now put in here live filters and I'll put in an unsharp mask and again if I move this a little bit it suddenly appears up here which means I can later decide what to put this in here. And what I'm going to in fact do is I'm going to put it up to one, which is a standard place to kind of start it. 
And then all you need to do is vary the factor as an initial way of doing it, and then you can try the other things in there. And that's the Unsharp mask. So that's why I could do the same again. I go up to this one, select parent layer, yes, and down to this one, select one layer below, select that. Now I'm going to do one more. And this can be filters, frequency separation. And for this, I'm going to do median. And what I'm going to do here is separate the um, the texture from the basic color. And for that, I'm going to put this up to about five. But uh, when we do this, when I apply this here, it's going to come up here. So I can later go back and change that. Then from here, I'm going to go to, um, yeah, I'm going to go here. In fact, I should have, should have gone up to that one there. If I can do it here, I'm going to select, I'm going to go up here because I'm going to rename that. And that was Gaussian and edges or sharpening. So I go back down to this. So these are little extra steps. Shouldn't have them in there, but it doesn't matter. It works fine. It won't take much time for that. And then this one was median. And this level here is going to be texture. And then the one below this, after I put the texture control in, it's a simple way to control texture with a, with a clarity because that's going to give us a slider that we can go. I can go down, you can decrease it as well as increase it. And so I can go up one and probably leave it at zero. And then I'm going to go to the one down here. Oops, cancel that because I go up first to this one, select the parent layer and this one below and select one layer below. This moving around is a bit of a pain, but it has to be done for the macro to be able to make sense of it. And this one is median again, and it's going to be just colour. And a useful one to put on that is to go to the colour balance. And for that, I can again, we'll just leave it on the midtones because that's useful here. You can put adjustments in here, but if you move that a little bit there, it's brought up this one here so I can do it during the macro. And then I can turn that off. But now what I'm going to do is to go to the this one here, select parent layer. And this is a trick now for putting it all into a group. So this is the bottom one first. And I say arrange group. And it's dropped it into here. And I call this frequencies, FS frequency separation stack. But I now want to put that one above in it. So I click on that one there, select layer of one layer above, select, and then arrange and move inside. And see it now puts that above the one before. So I can select back up to the frequency separation, select up again, go one layer up, select that, and arrange and move inside. And keep doing this. Have we got any more? Yes, one more. So select the parent layer, select one layer above, select that, and arrange, move inside, then go up to select the parent layer. So I end up with I'm, this layer is selected. And there we go, we've done the whole macro. So I just stop that there. Now what you can do is you can either click on this one here, which is add to library, uh, or you can export it uh, there. So which on this one here, export there, click on there, and this will do an AF macro, not with a notice without an S on it. So because if it's an S, then it's got a, it's a library one. Whereas if I say go to here, add to library, it will, you have got to put in a name of the macro and which library it is. And the top layer is default. Uh, so you can drop one in there if you want to run it from that. We can export it as a file and then re-import it with the one up here. But I'm just going to put it into default and call that same layer as this here, FS stack. And that's going to go into my default. 
and that drops me into the library here. I click on default and there it is at the bottom. But I can also run it from here. So what I can do now is just hit that and delete that. I presume I've started here. I can go to the library and say FS stack and it'll run all that. And there you go, it's done. I've got all those layers sliders, you know, sliced up there. So now I can go into this here. See there's a bit of noise up there. And do the noise reduction. So pull that up. Yeah, that's going to take out as much as it can from that. Notice it hasn't done it all because this is the, the layer which I've sliced, but it's, it's going to be enough. Then I can go to the next one. The unsharp mask, the radius is set to one already. Turn up the factor a bit to make that a little bit sharper, like that. Then go to the medium one, the clarity. For this I can go control zero to look further out. Yeah, so I've got a bit bigger picture of what's going on. And I can just fade that back a bit or turn it up a bit. So, yeah, so it's just making the whole thing it's working on the whole texture. I'll go then down then to the colour, double click on that, and it's leave it on the mid ranges because you can go shadows and highlights, but that will affect the whites and the dark. So if you do highlights, the, the clouds will change colour and so on. So for just general overall, look outside, control zero of course to see the big picture. And then I can tweak this a bit so I can play with this. If I go left here, I go it makes it more cyan, right it makes it go red, and so on and any bounce of those. So what shall I do? Let's put a little bit of a magenta into it. Here we go there and then literally play with these and see which what works. That warms it a bit and a bit there. So, so some two general warming. So it's a bit of red, a bit of magenta and a bit of yellow. But it's only on the mid-tone so that the clouds and the blacks are preserved. So there we go. That's doing this and using it. Let's go back again to here, to this one. By the way, if you've got it in here, if you right click this, you can say edit macro there and it will always bring it back up in here. Because what you can do with this, I'm just going to delete that, is that anywhere you've got a cogwheel here, you can put in, force this to come up in the macro. So I could here, because, if I want, because at the moment that frequency separation point, it doesn't come up when it's run but I can force it to be changed here. So I set edit here. And if I click on that and I can put in anything in there. So this was the, um, was it noise radius? I could set a default value there if I wanted to. Down here, the next one here was for the noise reduction. So I could set a default value or I can just say, I'll allow that luminance to be dead done there. So I say noise reduction and then it will, you can turn it up. So now when you run it, and you can do the same with all of these down here, now when I run it, it comes up here with this. I can change the noise radius in this. But when I ever do, when I do this, whenever I change this, it's going to run the complete macro each time. So this will take quite a while if to do this. So this is why I haven't done that initially, but you can do it. So this is a way of making the macro more flexible, but it also means it's going to take a bit longer. So I can you know, go up here if I want to reduce the noise again. So I'm going to bring this up here. It goes as a percentage number here. See, it's going to rerun that every single time. And if you've got a number of these, then this will take a bit more time, but it's still quicker. Notice nothing else has appeared above here because that's only going to appear when you hit the apply. So you're going to wait for this to run through the whole thing. There you go, that's worked on that a bit. If I apply that, then all those changes are going to know. It's going to, so it's going to run through everything again. So you've got to have a fast machine and I'm using a pretty quick machine doing this for this to work. So this is, which is why when I do things like this, I'm trying not to be able to have, add those extra variables. So here we go. 
here's my frequency separation stack and I can go in and change these things with so the noise reduction there so I put that up before so I can go and change that etc anyway that's it the whole macro and I hope that was useful and thank you very much for watching